What's going on everybody, welcome back. And we're gonna talk about this little beauty right here, my Kimber Tactical Entry 2. Now, this thing has been a love affair with me for probably the past 10 to 11 years. It was my work gun for about eight of those years. It's been awesome. I've changed the spring kits in here multiple times. I've changed all kinds of parts in this thing just from wearing them out. But I've gone away from it and I just really wanted to do a video on it because it is still one of my most favorite uh, range hammers in my personal collection. Now, why did I get the Kimber? So at the time when I was buying this, didn't have a huge budget, but we had just got 1911s approved at work and I needed one with a rail because um, I needed to be able to carry a weapon mounted light. And my chosen light is the Streamlight TLR1HL now. It was just the TLR1 back then. It's a good light, it's bright, it's budget friendly, and it's not like 300 bucks. And like I said, when you're spending about $1,300 on something like this 1911 from Kimber here, and another $300 on a light might not fit everybody's budget, and it sure as heck didn't fit mine back then. Streamlight's a good name, it's a good quality light, 800 lumens on the HLs now, so that's a flamethrower. It's pretty much all you're gonna need out there. So I was pretty much like everybody else, went out to the store, started doing my shopping, and I saw this here Kimber next to the Springfields, the Colts, and everything else out there. This one just kind of stood out to me. It had everything I was looking for, it had night sights, had a magwell, and it looked good. So I grabbed this thing out of that shelf and I kind of started punching it out a few times, kind of feeling it. The song kind of came into my head. You know, and then of course I uh, had to test out that trigger. So I was in there and just kind of checking it out and got a few pulls of that trigger out in there. And then another song popped into my head. Well, and then of course I decided, obviously, as we can see here today, I decided to take this thing home. I used it for work for a very long time. I want to say this gun's probably got around 25,000 rounds through it. Took me about eight years to get there, but I did. And it's just been, uh, it's been a workhorse that whole time. Now the 1911 is probably one of the most debated pistols out there. Quick history on it, because everybody may not know this. This was, uh, it was so cool they named a year after 1911, right? Uh, two World Wars. If you ever heard that stuff, leave me a comment down below and let me know who and what generation they were from that told you that stuff. This was a military service weapon from 1911 until now. There are still some units that carry this, but in large part it was decommissioned in about 86, I think it was, for big, big army and all the rest of the major units out there uh, because they brought in the Italian Tomahawk. So if you don't know what the Italian Tomahawk is, it's the Breda 92F. So when it stopped working, you basically just turned it around and you threw it at somebody. <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. That was, it, Breda 92 is a good gun. It was just not my chosen platform. Um, but then again, I would not have wanted to carry a 1911 that was 20 years old in the military either because those things just get a train run on them. There are a lot of myths out there when it comes to the 1911 as far as reliability, drop safe stuff, all those things. There are a couple different versions of the 1911 and the safeties within them, which we will talk about when we get into this thing. And I'll show you all those differences. One of the myths that's not a myth is I promise you, if you do not run and practice with this gun, it will run you. And this is where I get to say hashtag me too because I don't carry this anymore on a daily basis. I don't even carry this on a monthly basis. So when I went out to the range, you can see me flub and mag exchanges and all kinds of stuff. And it's because of the differences of this. It runs like a different gun. For those of you that don't know anything about 1911s, because some of this may be redundant for you, there's a couple of external safeties on here. It's a much thinner profile and it is a single stack. So talk about those external safeties real quick before we get into this. You got two of them, backstrap mainstream housing and the thumb safety right there. So if either of these is not depressed or turned off, say that safety button with your thumb, but you don't have the mainspring housing in, it will not go bang. Once you get that mainspring housing there depressed, you can release that hammer. So it's one of those things where you've got to run it. You've got to know how to use it. And you've got to stay proficient with it because it will run you, like I said, if you don't run it and run it consistently. But we should all be out there training regularly with what we are carrying on a regular basis. Now, some love the 1911 and some do not. And the reason that some love it and a lot of people do love it is this trigger right here. There's just not much out there like it. And a lot of people in the striker market chase the 1911 trigger and it's just not possible. Some people can get you very light, very nice triggers, but they're not going to get you a 1911 trigger. And that's based on how this system is designed. Striker fired setups in large part have a pin through the trigger itself and the trigger works kind of on an arc. Whereas the 1911, if I depress this here, it's a straight pull and it's a straight linear movement to the rear, which is what gives it that beautiful 1911 glass, glass break feel. And I know somebody's going to argue that about somebody being able to get a 1911 trigger in a 
striker fire pistol or whatever and and i expected that so feel free sound off in the comments do whatever you want to do and we can have that conversation with all the 1911 guys that are going to jump in here and tell me everything that i did wrong anyways and when it comes to those different styles of the 1911 there is the 70 series 80 series which are kind of colt ish things and there's a Schwartz system, which is what has in here. And I see your Schwartz is as big as mine. Now we'll show uh, the ones that I have, which is the Schwartz and the 70 series. I don't have a Colt 80 series, but I'll explain that out when we get into this. You know exactly what those internal striker block safeties are, which are much like striker uh, fired safety blocks in that slide. Now, as far as the rest of the 1911 stuff goes, there are tons of manufacturers of these, like I said. And then you got the 2011 stuff these days, which is awesome. And I'm waiting to get one uh, myself too. I just kind of like the heavier guns. I like metal guns, you know, heavy is good, heavy is reliable. And uh, if you run out of ammo, you can always hit them with it, which is, uh, which is good. And if you know what movie quote that came from, let me know in the comments down below. We're gonna go ahead, get into this thing, check it out, take this apart. I'm gonna explain to you the safeties, what's going on in here and kind of how things work a little bit. So you have a basic understanding of the 1911. This isn't gonna be a full detailed strip down of this thing because there's a lot of moving parts in here and that's gonna be for a different video. And then after we look at this thing up close, we're gonna go ahead and talk about the Kimber brand, the reliability of the 1911 and why I don't carry this anymore. So we're gonna go ahead and tear this thing down right now. All right, let's jump into this magical mythical 1911, the Kimber Tactical Entry 2. We're gonna go from nose down to the grip here on this bad boy and then do pull test and break it down so you understand what you're gonna get here. So standard barrel bushing in here, we'll get into that when we take it apart does come with night sights on it. You can see there, kind of that three dot and the night sight. These ones are pretty dead at this point because how old they are. You're gonna get your rail on the tactical entry too, which is what allows me to have the light on there. You're gonna get the butterfly trigger shoe, the butterfly hammer that comes in there. Front serrations on that slide, rear serrations obviously. Ambidextrous thumb safety right there. It's typical backstrap mainspring housing your uh, magazine release button right there got nice checkering on it you have checkering under the uh trigger guard right there that you can see and then that checkering follows down on the front of the pistol grip as well and then of course on the back strap as well although it's a much thicker pattern on the back strap one of the good things about the tack entry 2 is you get a factory magwell back mainstream housing that whole setup is in there from the factory, which is nice and you can just see how banged up and beat up this thing is She's an old girl and she needs some love at this point. Standard barrel in here is a match grade barrel, which is pretty much what you would expect out of a 1911. This thing, overall length, 8.7 inches, 5.5 barrel, and she weighs 40 ounces. This is a big girl. She's heavy. Uh, she is fatty, fatty, two by four, can't fit through the kitchen door fat. But I like it, it's good. I'm into heavier all metal guns, it's fine. Stainless steel construction on the frame, four and a half pounds to five pound trigger from the factory. Okay, we will do some pulls that is adjustable. Now we talk about different safeties when we break that down, I'll get into it coming up here in a second. So the basic breakdown of the 1911, obviously we're gonna drop the mag, which we already have. Make sure she is clear. And the first thing we gotta do is take off the nose right here, we're gonna depress that bushing and then swing the, or depress the stop for the spring and then move the bushing over to the side. A Couple different ways you can do that. You can do it with just your hands. Uh, like this real avid block here actually has the 1911 tools in it and it's magnetic. So this is what I use for a lot of work when I'm working on guns. But since I've got the light in there, it won't fit. Grab any tool that you have and you're just gonna rotate this over to the side. Ensure you keep your finger over that, if not, it will come flying up into your face, I promise you. Once you get that off to the side, slowly let that spring come out because it's under spring pressure. Pull the spring out, dump it in whatever thing you're using to keep your stuff. Go ahead and rotate the bushing off now to the shooter's left side. So you can see the little nubs there out to the left. That'll pull off completely. Disengage the safety, pull back. And as you'll see right there, you'll see two notches in the slide. The kind of circular smaller one is what you want to get right over the slide stop slide release. You're going to push from the opposite side on that nub, which is going to allow you to pull this out. And that end right there is what goes through the barrel link and actually keeps the barrel in there. At this point, just pull it straight forward, pull it off, pull your guide rod straight out the back like that. 
And then it's not like a striker fired system where you pull your barrel kind of up and out. This barrel comes straight out forward like that. Pretty easy disassembly there. And that's really about as far as most everyone is going to need to take this. So let's talk very quickly about the different series. This is a Schwartz style safety in here. Now what that means is right here on the frame, you'll see that secondary right here, almost like a detent, okay? Now when you hit the, the back strap, get the best light I can for you, you'll see that thing move up and down. Okay, what that is doing is depressing this very familiar, if you know strikers, this striker block um, right here. You know, striker guns, kind of the same thing. This is the block for the firing pin right there, which is obviously depressed by the hammer. So those two correlate like that. And once you hit that back strap, comes up, depresses that, allows the firing pin to go forward. That's the Schwartz style. Now on my Springfield here, this is uh, the traditional, I guess what you would call 70 series with Colt. You will see that that striker block is not there it does not exist on the original design okay on the 70 series style design now colt is what technically the 70 and 80 series i know people are going to argue about that it's a different design they do still have a safety on the 80 series in here with that same kind of striker block but it's actually another arm in here almost in the same place that as you pull the trigger it comes up and releases that striker block so the 80 series, the 70 series, and the Schwartz are three completely different designs. And a lot of people just say, well, Kimbers are 80 series. Well, kind of, yes and no. Striker block, yes. Different design. Multiple different companies use that Schwartz system. Other companies, Springfield, it's a 70 series design. And then Colt has a 70 and an 80 series design as well. So this is pretty much what you're going to have here. Barrel, it's a mass grade barrel. This one's still dirty because I've been out shooting it. It match good. It's match grade. Shoots good. It's got that big old 45 hole in it, which we love because 45 is awesome. But it's great. And like I said, this thing's got thousands and thousands of draws through it. It's probably got 25,000 rounds through it. And it's beat up. I mean, you can see um, the, the wear on this from the holster and from shooting it. But that's what I would expect at this, uh, at this rate of rounds going through here. Let's go ahead and put this back together. And we're going to do some pull tests. All right, so reassembly is just going to be the opposite of your disassembly. Go ahead and grab your slide, your barrel, sink it through, make sure your barrel lug is still mobile because it needs to be. Grab your guide rod, make sure that that kind of circular portion right there is going to be the part riding on the actual barrel right here. You can kind of see how that lines up. Makes perfect sense, right? Go ahead and grab the uh, lower portion of it. I like to do it upside down just because it makes it easier for me and you're going to ride it on there just like that. Now at this point what you're going to need to do is actually in the hole right there you can kind of see that little bit of that barrel link in there and you're going to grab your slide stop slide release, push it right through and then make sure that your notch right here is lined up. Now generally on most 1911s you can kind of just push in and up like that and it'll go in but for some reason this one's always been a bit of a booger. So I actually kind of have to manually depress that detent right there. All right, there we go. Once that's in there, just ride it forward, put the safety on. We'll go back to working on the front. Easiest way to do this, go ahead, grab your barrel bushing, turn it on there, and then you turn it over to the shooter's right hand side like that, because that way it will not come off. You can hold it right there. The open end of your spring right there one end's a little bit uh, more closed off. Put the closed off end in, and this open end's gonna be covered up by this, so it's nice and clean. Go ahead, drop that back in there. Make sure you hold it down under spring tension, and you'll twist that barrel bushing over the first edge. Grab whatever tool you have, depress it all the way. If it's a little stiff, ride it over. At this point, we're gonna do our safety checks. Okay, trigger won't pull, back strap, is depressed but the safety's on won't pull make sure the safety's up check it there now we have a full functioning setup and that's it so let's go and check out some of these pull tests here and see what this bad boy is pulling at okay 
So you can see right there, we're just a little bit over four and a half pounds, but we're within that four and a half to five that they say. And this is a little bit of a pain in the butt because of how you have to hold this to actually do a pull test with my pinky over there on the uh, back strap safety. So that one pulled right at five, which is uh, pretty much still in that zone, what I would expect and pretty much what this one feels like. All right, so right there again, just a tad over four and a half. And uh, that may have a little bit to do with kind of how I'm having to hold this thing and work it. But that four and a half pounds is not bad at all. Let's go ahead and talk about uh, the quality, the ruggedness of this, the reliability, and why I don't carry this thing anymore. Okay, it's magical, it's mythical, it's the 1911. So in all reality, um, I used to take a lot of people out and train them. I used to do a lot of training with friends and family and, and people that wanted to learn firearms. And I'd always take a 1911 out to the range with me with somebody who was new or was looking to buy their first pistol or anything. And they always loved the way that the 1911 felt and the way that it handled. What they didn't like was some of the manipulation drills because you really had to practice that stuff. The other thing they generally didn't like was the price tag because let's just face it, these things are costly, they're expensive, and they're probably not gonna get any cheaper anytime soon, at least for those good name brands. Now when it comes to training, everybody should be training with what they carry. Now this thing, I don't carry it much anymore. You saw in some of those videos where I'm flubbing the reloads and all that stuff. That's what's gonna happen if you just jump from gun to gun to gun and just doing different things. So that's why uh, it looks kind of funny when I'm running this. So let's talk about the lifetime, the reliability, and the maintenance on these. So this, the 1911s do require a little bit more maintenance. They definitely require a lot more training, and they require probably a little bit more upkeep on your training. So let's talk about that. As far as reliability goes, I have never had an, a reliability issue with this specific Kimber Tactical Entry 2. Did have a squib load one time, which we had to pound out. I thought it was going to cost me a barrel, but luckily it didn't. Um, that's it. I did have an issue with some magazines once. I just went ahead and got some new Wilson Combat mags and everything was good from there. Training aspect of it. If you don't keep up with your training on this thing, you don't manipulate this thing and carry it regularly, you're going to fail yourself out there, uh, myself included. You've got to stay on top of training when it comes to a weapon with you know, that different grip style, those different safeties on there, manipulation of the safety. Uh, it's a little bit different than if you're going from a striker fired system into something like this with that uh, completely different style of trigger. You got to be careful with what you're doing out there with that trigger finger. Make sure you go bang only when you want to. As far as the lifespan, I've changed the springs in here a couple times. This gun's got over 25,000 rounds through it. Um, it's been a tank. It's been a hammer out there. It's done everything I've needed it to do, and this has had a lot of nasty rounds through it from reloads to tons of frangible ammunition, a lot of plus P ammo. If you know what frange is, that's that ammo that basically turns into dust when it hits a hard steel target or anything like that. So it's been a tank, it's been reliable. Um, the reason I don't carry it anymore, uh, some of it for me, just what I do for a living, has to do with conformity. Um, and I love this thing, don't get me wrong, but not everybody carries it. There's like 10 of us that carry it, maybe a little bit more. But that conformity thing, should I go down or somebody go down next to me or I need additional ammo, these aren't gonna work, especially 45 ACP and most Glock 17 to 19, which is pretty much what everybody around me carries. So. There's a little bit to be said for having something that everybody else does have because I can pick their ammo up and they can pick mine up should they need it, you know, in case something really bad happens. Now, that being said, I am in the market for a 2011. That's going to be into my work setup because they carry a whole lot of rounds and it's just an awesome platform and I truly love 1911, 2011 style setups, but they're super expensive. So I got to wait for a while and save up on that one. Let's talk about some of those positives and some of those negatives. Let's talk about the positives. It's 1911. It's awesome. It's magical. It's mythical. Two world wars. They named a year after it, all that good stuff. Um, it's good. It shoots good. It shoots uh, very, very accurate, very reliable. And it's, it's fun. It's just a lot of fun to shoot these things. You can be extremely fast with it. And let's just face it, it has probably one of the best triggers because it's the one that everybody always chases when they're making aftermarket triggers for everything else. But it is not all peaches and cream when it comes to the 1911. So more maintenance, more training requirements, more ongoing training requirements to keep up with it. They're heavy. That can be good. That can be bad. Helps with that recoil impulse a little bit. But you're going to know this thing is on your hip if you're carrying it and you're probably going to be carrying more 45 ammo magazines on you which are going to be a little bit heavier than the nine depending on how many mags you're carrying plus this thing weighs 40 ounces on its own that's a girthy girl right there it's so probably the biggest buzzkill is those either eight to ten round mags in there which are what most people are going to carry for liability it's kind of a buzzkill, so uh make sure you hit them in the face but uh that's it you know and i wanted to show this one to you guys because it's one of my favorites i love it 
great setup. If you're in looking for the 1911 stuff, depending on your budget, this very well may be something to look at. I really hope you guys appreciated seeing the video and learning about this Kimber Tactical Entry 2. You guys get out there and have some fun. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that like button. If you're looking at supporting me at all, you can check the subscribe star out. Or you can use any of the links down below, the affiliate links or stuff. You guys get out there, stay safe, stay dangerous, and I will see you guys on the next one.